play a game. Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Shane Plays Live Geek Talk Radio out of Little Rock, Arkansas. So glad you're here. We're on a temporary station of 99.5, and I will uh, uh, talk about that more here in a little bit. But thanks so much for listening. This is Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. And we got a cool show today. Got to, and I'll introduce him here in a moment. But we've got uh, Randy Duncan, who is a uh, comics professor scholar and uh, professional speaker talks about comics he's got a couple of books out including one called the power of comics so looking forward to talk about that because i love comic books and i love talking about what they really are as a medium and not just entertainment right. so yeah so randy uh say hi real quick and then we're going to get into a news segment all right uh, hi thanks hey. for having me man you are welcome i'm um, so glad you're here and uh looking forward to to digging into this with you we've also got lurking in the shadows lisa and her daughter madeline uh lisa uh asked if she could she's interested in communications and she asked if she could check out how radio works so she's lurking in there with zach and uh i think i'm going to give lisa a plug i think she owns a local company called moxie consulting so there you go uh all right so uh a couple of house cleaning housekeeping notes if you will and then we'll dig into the show proper have our new segment and all that good stuff uh you can always go to shaneplays.com that's shane plays like i like to play stuff not like shane's place where he hangs out shaneplays.com and there's a uh, post up on the website that has uh links and show notes and whatnot for today's show right now so that way if you hear something you want to know more about or if you miss something and you're like what were they talking about you can go there check it out so uh, it's, it's there for your handy reference. Uh, we're also, uh, the show always goes out after the fact. Now, this is live Geek Talk Radio. So you can call in whether you're listening online or whether you're uh, listening on the radio. It doesn't matter. Call in 501-823-0965. That's 501-823-0965. You can also uh, tweet me at Shane Plays, and I do monitor that uh, Twitter stream. So if anybody wants to send a question or comment by Twitter, I will uh, try to work it out or work it in. But you, the show also goes out as a podcast. So in the next day or two, probably Monday, I'm kind of working with getting it out on Mondays. It will go out as a podcast. You can find it on shameplays.com. You can find it uh, on iTunes or Stitcher or other fine, fine podcast directories. Um, and then, hey, Zach, I can't hear. I don't know. It just just lost my audio. I don't know what happened. Okay, thanks, buddy. Um, I, I, I guess I shouldn't have to hear myself in radio, but it just messes me up if I don't. So I don't know what happened. Uh, okay, well, I can hear myself now. Um, and I know everybody else out there can hear me too. So uh, we're also carried on uh, Krypton Radio. KryptonRadio.com is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. Now, we're carried a week delayed. So... Right now, at this very time, people are hearing last week's show on Krypton Radio, uh, but Gene Turnbow, uh, the founder and manager and all that over there, is working on getting it live. So last, let me mention the temporary station change. I think this weekend and next weekend, we are on uh, 99.5 uh, Faith Talk, which is a sister station to the uh, 96.5 FM, the answer that we're normally on. So right now on Saturday for the next couple of weeks, and, we, and this has been going on for several weeks now due to the uh, Washington Fab Baptist football schedule, If you on Saturday we're live on 99.5. So if you're on Faith Talk going, what the heck, Geek Talk Radio, that's why. Uh, and then we'll play again pre-recorded tomorrow on our normal station, 96.5 uh, FM, the answer. So if you're listening to this on uh, Krypton Radio, or if you're listening to this on Sunday on 96.5 FM, the answer, it's pre recorded. Don't try to call or text or any of that. So, uh, and that's a couple of more weeks, and then we'll be back to our normal uh, station lineup and all that. I think the weekend following November 14th. So, I think that's it. Zach, you hear me do all my housekeeping. Have I left anything out I normally mention? I have. What did I leave out? He's nodding. But, and I left out Petrayon on purpose because I've got that in both of my ad breaks now. 
Is that what is that what I left out? Okay. So Zach, sports analyst, you told me before the the show, I said what what game are you looking forward to this weekend? And you told me LSU about. LSU Auburn, mm-hmm. and LSU you, Alabama, Alabama, mm-hmm. and you told me that you thought Alabama was going to take it. Yes. And why is that, Mister Sports Analyst? Well, they're playing it at home. They have a great defense, and um, the coach is just better. He's just oh, <laughs> just better. Yeah. Are you a football guy, Randy? Uh, I'm an LSU grad. So, oh, uh, see, the, I, I think he's Zach, got that wrong. You just insulted my <laughs> guest, man. He's Sorry, he just wrong. threw off his headphones and he's walking out. No. He's a he's a regular tiger. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And I don't follow college football that much, uh, but I hear we have a pretty good running back nowadays at LSU. So Fournette's okay. a beast. All right. <laughs> now, now he's got to say something nice, yeah. right? Uh, that's all right, Zach. Hey, man, analysts have to be coldly professional. They just have to lay it out like they see it. So, all right. Okay. So uh, let's. Uh, I know our guys are working this weekend, uh, Zach. Let's let's listen in on them in the newsroom. Randy, these guys work on Saturdays. Can you believe that? <laughs> Man, they don't even complain that all we can afford is typewriters. So now I know one of the guys isn't here. Uh, Sal, and Sal is our news guy. He's a hard bitten reporter. He wears a trench coat and a fedora and chews a cigar. He said he had to go into hiding because he stumbled onto something, some kind of mob story, and they're trying to whack him. So he's he's still working, but he's not in the newsroom today. So, man, these guys are hardcore. So. <laughs> Yeah, I told him last week I'm trying to give him a penny an hour raise. There you go. Yeah, if somebody if somebody else uh, contributes on Patreon.com, I'll give him a penny an hour raise. Pulp news rates. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay, here we go. Uh, Zach, we got we got some Star Trek news. Do you have the traditional Shane plays radio Star Trek music to accompany this? Let's do it. Rip it. Okay, so Randy, I should have warned you beforehand that was happening. So I hope you're not <laughs> mentally damaged or anything. That's your tradition here on Shame Plays. So I don't know if you heard about this. I know a lot of people are excited. There's a new Star Trek TV series coming in 2017. I had not heard about it. Yeah, that, a, new, a new Star Trek TV series. Uh, don't know a lot about it yet. Don't know what era it's going to be set in. Don't know which crew, ship. Uh, no clue. But some of the people that are involved with J.J. Trek uh, are evidently involved. That's about all I know. But the link in all these news stories, if people go to shameplays.com, that you can click a link and, and read the full story. So there you go. Uh, but I'm excited. I love Star Trek. Oh, and I, yeah, I like yeah. all I, you know, I, the comic books, the, uh, the TV shows, all the different series. And I, even, I, don't, I don't hate J.J. Trek because you know, they did it in such a way that we got more Star Trek but they did it like in an alternate timeline. So the right, other it's stuff's its still own there. thing. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, I have no, yeah. you know, and I would prefer not to have a JJ Trek TV series. But if that's what I get, I'm like, all right, you yeah, know, yeah, I, be fine. you know, why not? So, uh, but they're doing some weird thing. There's like, um, yeah, I think they're going to broadcast the first episode on CBS. And then after that, it's going to be on some website where you have to pay like $5 a month. I, I don't know. I don't know. remember back in the day they launched UPN with Voyager. Do you remember that? Oh, like right, they launched, right. And they uh-huh. launched, uh, was it Fox? They launched with um, Next Generation, if I remember right. Well, that was one of the early shows. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, they, they, they try to launch new stuff with a built-in right. audience, yeah. right? So, okay. Here's another. Uh, this is talking about big money. Uh, Activision has bought Candy Crush Maker <laughs> King for $5.9 billion with a b uh, i did hear that yeah billion <laughs> and activision makes call of duty so are we going to have like call of candy crush would you play that zach would you play call of candy crush i think he's in their chat with madeline I don't <laughs> hey madeline you don't hear you didn't hear me did you would you play call of candy crush you don't he doesn't know what i'm talking about uh, yeah, i'm giving these incredibly great news <laughs> items all right uh now i've got three i've got a, a trifecta a hat trick uh, Zach, the um, the uh, sports analyst. What does a hat trick mean? It means three. That's right. So I've got a I've got a I've got a hat trick of Blizzard news. 
One, the Warcraft movie trailer is out now. And it actually looked pretty decent. Uh, there's a new poster for the movie out. Uh, Blizzard is no longer reporting the World of Warcraft subcri subscriber numbers. So, I, you know, they're saying it's not really a true metric of use of the game anymore. They've been bleeding subscriber, even though they're still at like almost 6 million. Uh, it's 5 point something million subscribers. They've been dropping. So now they're not going to report the subscriber numbers any longer. And then uh, last, uh, uh, Blizzard-wise anyways, this is what makes people happy. Uh, Blizzard is updating classic games to quote-unquote restore to glory. Uh, StarCraft, which came out in 1998. Warcraft 3, which came out in 2002. And Diablo 2, or Diablo 2, however people prefer to say it, uh, which came out in 2000. So, did you play? Are you a gamer at all, Randy? Did you play those? Not that much. I play my Madden game now. Yeah. That's about all I have. Do you time play the for? Tigers? Well, no, Madden is. No, it's Madden. Yeah. Is NFL. Okay, so Madden's yeah. NFL, yeah. right? So, yeah. uh, I realized that right after I said that. I, I'm, I play the Saints mostly. I'm a New Orleans native. So, is it, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Have you got any insults about? Uh, the Saints, Zach. <laughs> the, Patri the Patriots are better. Oh, see, why is it, Zach? The Patriots and about 30 other NFL teams might be better this year. But you but, love you them know. anyway. Well, you got to, yeah, you yeah. got to love them. You're not a fair weather fan. <laughs> no, you're a real no. fan. You got to suffer through everything except that one year where they won the Super Bowl, you know. Yeah, and, but when they do win, <laughs> that king cake tastes real good. Yeah, yeah. It? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so here's this is cool. Uh, and remember, people, I've, you know, I got a lot of news items, kind of working through them quick so that we can have plenty of time with Randy. But uh, uh, you always go to, you can go to shameplays.com, check out the links uh, for all these news items. There's a Metroid fan film that just came out, and it looks really amazing. I'm not even a Metroid fan. I, I've never, not real, never really been into Metroid. But there's this fan film that just came out that looks spectacular. And uh, I thought it was all CGI. Uh, but when I was watching the credits, I think it's some live action and CJ. Very well done. Uh, people, if you want to if you want to help support the show. And no, I'm not going to talk about Patreon. Well, as long as I brought it up, you can go to Patreon.com slash Shane plays and support the show. But uh, right now, GOG GOG, uh, good old games is having their big fall sale. And if you go to and hundreds of DRM free games up to 90 percent off, not 99, 90 uh, and if you go there, if you if you don't have an account at GOG and you use my affiliate link, which I have on the show notes page, create an account and buy something, I'll get a little something some for that. So you don't pay any extra. You get the game, same price you pay anyway, but it helps out the show a little bit. So, all right, uh, are, Randy, are you a Harry Potter fan at all? Yeah, I read the books. Okay. Uh, so uh, so what? you know what a muggle is, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Zach, you know what a muggle mm -hmm. is? Ask Madeline if she knows what a muggle <laughs> is. Okay, all right, so Madeline knows what a muggle is. Lisa, you know what a muggle is? So the only muggle around here is Zach. You're the muggle. That means you don't have any magic, pal. It means you're not in the happening haps in the Harry Potter world. So there's a new J.K. Rowling. I, I, I'm still fuzzy on if it's a book or a Broadway play or a movie. I don't, I don't, I don't quite know. Uh, but there's a new thing, something Harry Potter coming out. And in it, they uh, J.K. Rowling herself introduces the American word for muggle. Have, have you heard this? I have not. Uh. Okay. It's nomad. That means you have no magic. So the American version of muggle is nomad. So I guess since Zach's an American, he's a nomad. You're not a muggle. You're not a muggle. You're a no madge. I don't know how I feel about that because I love that the name word muggle. doesn't have as much maggage as magic to it as yeah. muggle does. I mean, muggle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maggage. Yeah, nice it just kind of captures that yeah. British feel. Yeah, exactly. Of a, muggle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're muggle. a no madge. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, anyway, I I think I'd rather be a muggle than a no madge. Yeah. Is, that, is that supposed to be kind of hip American sounding or something? No madge? I don't know. Madeline, I can see through the window. Thumbs up or thumbs down on no madge? Thumbs down. Not even thumbs sideways. Thumbs down. All right. Well, so that's that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, a couple more news items, and then we will get to Randy Duncan, I promise, because I want to talk to him. Uh, Zach, I don't, were, you, were you producing? I can't remember if you were producing. We had this news item where they found – now listen to this carefully – a Nintendo PlayStation prototype. Were you, were you pretty? Okay, well, several weeks back, there was a news item. Not a Sony PlayStation. 
a Nintendo PlayStation. Years ago, Nintendo and Sony had worked, I think before the main PlayStation came out, uh, the PS1, they were working together and they, they actually had some prototypes of a Nintendo PlayStation. So somebody found one, his dad had it or something, and people are like, ah, it's, that's a hoax or whatever. Well, now there's proof that it's real and they have footage of it in action. So that, that link is on... Uh, the Shane Plays uh, show notes page. All right, we got it. Let's do it, Zach. Let's have the Star Wars fanfare. We'll wrap up on some Star Wars news. So we'll hit a break. When we come back, it's going to be all Randy Duncan all the time. time. All the time. Are you a Star Wars fan, Randy? Oh, yes. Are you definitely. looking forward to the... Yeah, yeah. can't okay, wait. The Force Awakens? All right, you got your tickets yet? No, no. I, I survived I, When I say it. I can't wait, actually, I will wait. After yeah. it's been out a couple of weeks, go like... Yeah, you know, I'm not... I'm, 10 o'clock have, matinee on a Wednesday... I've yeah. gotten to where I'm not a big that night kind right. of guy, but yeah. for this one, I'm going to do it. I survived the great internet pre-sales uh, uh, ticket meltdown of 2015 to get my tech. <laughs> tickets, my tickets. All right, hit us with the fanfare, Zach. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There goosebumps. It is. <laughs> yeah, goosebumps. There it is. Bum, bum. Oh, yeah. All right, thanks, Zach. All right, so uh, got got three p. Another hat trick of of news here, if you will. First, uh, this is pretty cool. J.J. Abrams uh, has helped a dying Star Wars fan see The Force Awakens early. So there was a there was a guy. I'm assuming from cancer. The link the the news link is on shameplays.com. And uh, they they were doing sort of a hashtag Twitter internet lobby. Hey, show this guy the that's his dying right, wish. Yeah. And J.J. Abrams did it. Like they called him and, and like we're coming. And the next day they showed it to him. And and uh, Mark Hamill and John Boyega, you know the guy who's uh, a plays. I think he plays Finn in the new movie. Mm-hmm. They were both kind of lobbying for it too. So. Uh, didn't say whether it was good or bad or any, and I think they probably said you can say nothing about it. Don't even say if you like it, you know, but they did say we're so happy that it happened and all this stuff. So, so that's pretty neat. That is, that's very neat. Yeah. Yeah, That's very cool. So, uh, there's a new, and I haven't seen this Randy because I'm at the point where I feel like I've seen everything I want to see and I'm cutting myself off for potential spoilers. Right. But there's a new international star wars the force awakens trailer and evidently has a lot of new footage in it so if you've already seen all the trailers that have been released you want to see more now all i've seen because you know stuff kind of gets around uh whether you're trying to see it or not there's this great scene of there's like a sunset or a sunrise and there's tie fighters coming out of it and it looks really good yeah just really good so uh but i the link is on the on the show on the uh Show notes page on shameplays.com, but I have not watched the trailer. But if somebody else wants well, to, I try to, to avoid it. trailers yeah. nowadays because they don't, they've forgotten how to make them. They, they give you a synopsis of the movie yeah. rather than something that entices you to well, see Well, either you know? that or they purposefully misdirect you. They tell a right, miniature story <laughs> in the trailer that's not really the what story it's about. It, yeah. You know, and, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I really do want to move forward mm-hmm. and give you more time. But some movies, they'll show scenes in the trailer that are not in the movie. Right. Like, do you remember Cliffhanger did that, the Sylvester Stallone movie? There was this whole big scene that wasn't even in the movie, but it was in the trailer. So, anyway. Uh, okay, and then finally, the Star Wars The Force Awakens countdown is 40 days. 40 days. Now, if you've got tickets to see Thursday night, I guess it's actually 39 days. So, anyway, all right. We're going to uh, spend more time than I normally do on the news. So many news items. I want to... Go ahead and wrap that up. And, uh, Zach, take us to a break. And when we get back, we will have more, or not more, we will have Randy Duncan, The Power of Comics. Megawars.net. The classic online space strategy game has returned. Bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition, leading to the ultimate battle of the galaxy. Grab your slot today in one of the most hotly anticipated indie games of 2015. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available during our pre-sale event running now. Megawars.net The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie. 
and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage, monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey we are back with uh randy duncan this is shame plays a journey into the things we love geek talk radio we're temporarily on 99.5 faith talk there's temporary situations so if you're like what the heck uh don't worry and we're also replay tomorrow on 96.5 fm the answer pre-recorded so uh we had our had our news segment now for the rest of the show we've got randy duncan uh who is a uh, comic scholar and professor and professional speaker. He's written at least two books that I know of. Uh, one I have a copy of, The Power of Comics, History, Form, and Culture. And then he's got a new book. Um, let me see that book again real quick, Randy. Thank you, sir. It is Creating Comics as Journalism, Memoir, and Nonfiction. And it has a really cool uh, cover that's sort of an homage to uh, Rear Window with Jimmy Stewart, the classic Hitchcock movie. So, um, and, and if you want to know, I'll, I'll let Randy tell a little bit about himself, but if you go to shameplays.com, there's links to his books on the show notes page. And there's also an article, let's see if I can remember what the name of the article is here, that, um, oh, you probably know this article when I, when I mention it here, Randy. I found it and linked it. Let me see if I can find it. Is it one here. of the Demo Gazette articles? It says, Randy Duncan creating a class filled with costumes, iconic characters, and crash. Does that not <laughs> ring a bell? Is that ring a bell? Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah, that's Arkansas that's, Online. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the yeah. Dim Gas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Randy, and thanks so much for being on the show. All right. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm a professor of communication and comics at Henderson State University. I've been there decades. Uh, I started teaching com communication and, and the communication of comics in the late 80s, maybe early 90s. And I would teach a comics course every other year or so. And that kind of grew to a second comics course. And now we have a minor in comic studies at Henderson. It's not the first in the nation, but we're among the first half dozen or so. Really? Right out of good old Arkadelphia, yes, Arkansas. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's great. I've got I'm actually pretty familiar with Arkadelphia. I've got family that have lived there, used to go there as a kid and stuff. So uh and then later I found out there was a cool college there. I didn't even know that till later. Yeah. On, well two so. two colleges, one right. that's cool and OBU. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so well, I gotta be like yeah. <laughs> Oh man, the smack talking today. <laughs> which which got you displaced, you know, anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The football schedule. Now we have a, we have a pretty good relationship, except when it's uh, battle of the ravine time and we're playing each other in basketball or football. Right. But uh, Henderson has been wonderfully supportive of the comic studies. We've uh, got this wonderful special collection. Uh, pretty much every graphic novel that's worth reading. Most of the really? academic work that's done about comics. And we also have the Stephen R. Bassett collection, which is uh, the fellow who drew Swamp Thing when yep. Alan Moore was writing yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, done lots, lots of other stuff. But he, uh, partly because he got remarried and his wife said, you need to clean out the garage and the attic. Really? Uh, <laughs> so you ended up with it. So he, he yeah. And, um, yeah, he was not only an artist, but a publisher um, and friends with lots of people in comics so he has scott mcleod's first version of understanding comics um, like a pre-published version yes uh -huh, okay yeah. um and you know scripts for movies that were never made those kinds of things he just got from people um 
his Spider Baby Graphics was also the company that published um, Alan Moore's From Hell first. I remember From Hell. Yeah. yeah. Which and, the movie did not really do the series justice, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, it wasn't the, a good representation. Yeah. Of how can you? The, I mean, yeah. The graphic novel has 35 pages of end notes. So, right. you know, yeah. the complexity of it, you can't get in a two well, hour movie. Well, anything Alan Moore does, even his, oh, how do I put this? I don't think even Alan. I don't think Alan Moore really does hack work, but even the stuff that he's like, like not going as deep as he normally does. Uh, I've th- I'm, I'm specifically thinking of some stuff he did, some superhero stuff. I can't Supreme, remember. maybe not even Supreme. Or- there was another uh, company. It wasn't ABC. It wasn't. But no matter what Alan do- Moore does, it's it's got a deepness of its own right, that right. nobody else can match. I always just opinion. assume yeah. it's over my head and I yeah. don't really understand everything that's going on. Well, he uh, did in, uh, and I know we're not here to talk about Promethea, but or Alan Moore, I mean, but, and I'm not saying I, I say, hey, go out and study the occult or anything like that, but he did a <laughs> series in Promethea where he was basically teaching the Kabbalah and yes. the, and the uh, uh, that tree, the tree of life. Yeah, tree of life. I mean, he yeah. was it was like a primer on <laughs> on like occult magic, and yeah, just yeah. Guy. Well, I, I teach a graphic novel seminar that's yeah. a variable topic course, and so the last time I taught it, it was the lesser known works of Alan Moore. Right. So we read Promethea. We read uh, a disease of language. I have not. I'm not even familiar um, with that one myself, and I consider and, uh, myself an Alan Moore guy. <laughs> we read the birth call. Um, and students did lots of reports on things that were mentioned in Promethea, and so a lot of that got into like Aleister Crowley, John D, other occultists. Right. And uh, well, he uh, students mean, loved the course, but later when I was describing it to someone, and and I went, "Oops, it sounds like I taught a course on the occult, which is yeah. not really what well, was not your intention. <laughs> it was not my well, intention. Well, he considers no. himself a shaman now, right? Or, right yeah, I mean, right. he's yeah. in fact he's you know. <laughs> I, I guess he's done with superheroes or whatever. I'm trying to remember if it, it's, folks, the call in number is 501 258 26. Not, I'm giving out my own <laughs> number. 501 823 0965. You can tweet me at Shane Plays. It's 501 823 0965. There was a series he did, and in it, it was like a, it was a team superhero book. And, and one of the members had this book that he could write things in and it would make stuff happen. And he wrote himself into the superhero team. And I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Can't and I almost felt like that Alan Moore was almost kind of phoning that in, like just paying the bills. <laughs> but it was still great work because it was Alan Moore, yeah, right? Yeah. So anyway. Um, so you do, you teach comics. Uh, and you also, you you kind of, I mean, one thing, I was like, hey, you want to come on the show? And you're like, well, I'm going to England and I'm going here and I'm going here and I'm going here. So you do a lot of professional speaking on it as well, right? Well, I don't know if I call it professional speaking based on what I get paid. Okay. And uh, some of it's at conferences where you get paid nothing. Uh, but, you know, the last place I went to Houston was a, a paid gig where they said, come down and talk about comics. And you did. I did. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> well, but maybe I, I do it, that for... Uh, Paul Crutcher in the English department at ULR for lunch. You know, he takes oh. me out after. Yeah, so say, that's, maybe yeah. they at least give you a meal. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. Uh, that That's neat. And, and then the way that I met you was uh, Michael Tierney had you at uh, the comic book store over in Little right, Rock right. with copies of The Power of Comics. Mm-hmm. And, and I popped by and I was like, oh, and so we got to talking. So, and I actually worked with some people that took your classes. Uh, they were like, oh, Randy Duncan. And they had taken some oh, of your classes okay. at Henderson. So. So you're you're mightily famous, Randy. <laughs> you cannot walk down the road. With a small people. radius, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what you know, and I wanted to. We, you and I talked about this personally. I don't even know if you remember when when we met a few months ago, uh, and you said, "Well, that's kind of a." And I'm I'm going to say that share the story I'm talking about. But you said, "Well, that's we're not sure if that's totally true, but it's kind of become an anecdote that gets passed around, where there was a guy who claims he taught." the first college superhero or comic book for credit. Right. And his, and, and the story goes that he was making the case that he should be able to teach comic books in college for credit. And the people were like, no, that's ridiculous, whatever. And I'm, I'm totally paraphrasing here. (laughs) Uh, And then he, and, and they were like, okay, you know, why should you do that? And he goes, okay, so let's see. Moses uh, was by his parents was put in a basket, floated down a river, and rescued by 
Pharaoh's daughter and raised and came on to be the savior of the Jewish people. Now, Superman was put into a little <laughs> rocket as a yeah. boy and launched to Earth and, you know, adopted and big, and, and they were like, oh, okay, sold. And, <laughs> and, and so now you're saying that yeah. may or may not be the well, first one. And that, that wasn't just a guy. That was Michael Uslan, the, the okay. guy who's responsible for Batman movies. Okay, the, the, well, there the you producer go. So of the not Batman just movies. A guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pun- and, um, uh, I, I believe he probably sold it like that, right? Because he sold Hollywood on the idea of a Batman movie, yeah, you know, okay. in the eighties. So, so he's uh, so he's the he's, one that got the Tim Burton Batman movie made. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, what I mean, like I'm, I believe that story. But, but there happened. are other possible people who were were teaching other places that That's usually was not aware of. You so know. he may or may not have been the first. Right. Right. It, it, but it was it was happening in the early seventies. A number of places, and he may not have been absolutely the first, right? But he's Michael Uslan, and he wrote a book yeah. about it, and, and yeah. so well, it's still a great, well, it's a great story. story. It's yeah. a great story, <laughs> and I think it carries a punch. You know, it's like, oh, yes, uh-huh. you know, you really, because in a, I know you know this, I know this. I don't know if all of our listeners know this, whether they're listening now or on the podcast or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, Superman was created by Jewish immigrants, right? You know, and even call dash L E L L is very Jewish, very yes. Hebrew, very, you know, in fact, L I think means house of God or, or something mm-hmm. like that is yeah. something along those lines. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's um, a, a couple of people, Danny Fingeroth, mm-hmm. who was a Spider-Man editor for a while and writer uh, who wrote a book about, um, was it from Krypton to Krakow? How the Jews created comics. Oh, okay. Um, Ari Kaplan, who's yeah. another Jewish writer, wrote a book about how the Jews create right. comics. I forget the title of his. Right. But, um, of course, and, you got and a third Easter. person they knew, a rabbi friend of theirs. So it's yeah, like these these three New York Jewish guys had yeah. all around the same two year period right. written books about this. Cause, yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, because so, you mean, know Stan Lee was Stanley Lieber, Jack right. Kirby he changed was Jacob his name. Kurtzberg, yeah. Right. Yeah, and uh, then of course, Will a, is it Eisner or Eisner. Uh, it's Eisner. Eisner. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, of course, he was, I mean, he even Jewish, wrote yes, books like The Bronx Stories or whatever, I think. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it was, you know, deeply, deeply uh, culturally uh, flavored, if right, you will. Right, so, About growing up in the Jewish ghettos of New right. York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the point is, I'm not, I'm not trying to make a point about any one ethnic group in general, but even quote unquote superhero comic books that are just about whiz bang, bam, pow, have cultural forces behind them right Uh, and and the fact that these people are creating them as we're going up to world war ii and what's happening in germany with the jews uh even though people weren't as fully aware of it till later um you know there's a reason that joe simon and jack kirby both Jewish who created Captain right. America. To punch Hitler in the had jaw. Had him punching Hitler in the jaw before yeah. we were actually in the war. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fantasy fulfillment in comics. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. and I guess on behalf of the writers and the artists as much as the readers. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so. Oh, to, just to add to that, if, yeah. if, if people haven't read Michael Chabon's uh, The Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. I have not. Uh, which won the Pulitzer Prize for literature. Um it's a novel that's basically the history of the comic book industry. And so he, he takes um, a lot of those people and kind of composites them into his two main characters. So, right. yeah, fascinating read. You'd love it. Yeah, I'll yeah. check that out. Uh-huh. Um, you know, and, and uh, like for me, growing up in the 70s and the 80s, comic books and superheroes are inextricably linked. Now, that doesn't mm-hmm. mean that I won't read other genres. But I'll still, last night, I was reading Contest of Champions, you know, I just, <laughs> you know, Avengers, whatever. But I, I'll still enjoy other, you know, genres or whatever. Uh, but comic books in America, and I guess some parts of the West, comic books and superheroes are just clamped together. But that's not, they, they don't have to be about superheroes. So they can no, be about, there is, there's yeah. so much wonderful stuff out there nowadays, and, uh, you know, we're, we we used to call the 40s the golden age, but this is the real golden age of comics. As far as the genres There's, kind of spreading out, I would agree yeah, with yeah, that. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. There's a, uh, I mean, if I go to the comic book store today, uh, which, I mean, I'm, I'm just speaking, I've already, you know, dropped by recently or whatever, but if I went in today, the, 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 the range of genres is a lot wider than mm-hmm. it would have been in the 80s. You would have had... 
99.9% superhero stuff. Right. Now, the traditional comic book store, though, is still going to have mostly superheroes because right. that's how they make their money. Right. But some of these things that you know sell maybe 30,000 yeah. copies, um, you have to go to the, the larger comic book stores or, or – get right. them online or something right yeah. uh -huh. you know and and you know I, know I know people always bring this up when you're talking about american comics but in japan it's comic books are like tv every yes. possible different genre <laughs> is represented right. you know it's culturally a different perceived thing like you'll see businessmen reading manga or whatever mm -hmm. on the train on the way home it's just a different thing you know and and but here in america some of the perception of stigma of comics has kind of dropped off a little bit, you know, where I think they're a little bit more culturally. I, th you know. I think it has, uh, yeah. especially if you call them a graphic novel. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even if they're not a graphic yeah. novil, yeah. Or trade a graphic paperback novel. reprint, Illustrated whatever. literature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, going to have to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll finish up. When we come back, I want to talk about maybe uh, some trends you're seeing in current comic books. Okay, right. Uh you know, and I wish, boy, I, I wish we had all day to talk about this. I love it, but time goes so quick. Let me, I'm going to uh, uh, talk about one of our sponsors after that. Zach's going to take us to a break. But uh, Game Goblins, some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for, uh, for play space. You'll like that space. Because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. And listen, first-time customers, mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. Take us to a break, Zach. MegaWars.net. The classic online space strategy game has returned, bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition, leading to the ultimate battle of the galaxy. Grab your slot today in one of the most hotly anticipated indie games of 2015. Visit MegaWars.net and get options only available during our pre-sale event running now. MegaWars.net. The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. We're talking with uh, Randy Duncan, who is um, a scholar and professor of comics. And as much as I love comics, he's probably forgotten more stuff in his little pinky <laughs> than I'll ever know about comics. So, uh, and I, I was I was doing a little research uh, during the break. The character that I was trying to remember, it looks like they did it in the. Um, in the same universe with Supreme, I was like, "Oh, there was the guy who had the magic book." And da da da. The guy's the character's name was Storybook Smith. 
uh, and I, I, can't, I haven't found the um, the actual story, but there was a follow up story. It's like in the Supreme Universe and all that. Uh, but yeah, they they figured out that uh, you know you always have that kind of sidekick character in super yeah, teams. Yeah, uh, they Rick figured Jones, out that yeah. he had yeah he had written himself into the oh, team okay. using his <laughs> magic book. So I thought that was classic Alan Moore stuff. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so you know we we kind of talked about the uh, cultural forces influencing artists, and by artists I mean the writer, I mean the the inker, the penciler, the colorist, letterer, all of it. Uh, and to creating stuff and like resulting in, for example, Superman. But comic books are also used purposefully to try to influence the culture. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's, I mean, it's always happened. In fact, uh, uh, I, I've read, I think it's true. I, 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 you know, somebody could fact check this, but evidently, like communist China back in the 50s noticed how into comic books kids were. And they ended up making comic books over in China to spread their propaganda in China because it was right. so effective, right. Mm -hmm. right? And we've talked about before that you and I have offline, but I'll mention on the radio here again, that Scott McCloud makes the point in understanding comics that one of the powerful things about comics is what happens in between the panels, mm -hmm. that closure concept. So you go from panel A to panel B, and your mind fills in everything else. And so you engage with comics on right. a level that you do no other medium, yeah. right? And it's a very <laughs> yeah. powerful concept. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get into geeky formal stuff, but right. you know, I don't totally agree with that idea of closure. But oh, do I, you not? I okay. absolutely agree with the idea of engagement. Right. That, that, student, that uh, the, the students tell me that they get something out of reading the comic they didn't get out of reading the movie. Uh, or seeing the movie because yeah. they were more involved in it. Exactly. So even if they've seen the movie, they feel it was a whole different experience. Right. Um, and, and when it's a comic that you haven't seen in some other medium, uh, that really is powerful to, right. to pull you into it. Because you have powerful. to do the work to complete it. Yeah. Well, I, lo I mean, I've always been a re – I love to read books. I love to watch movies. I love to watch TV, and I love comic books. And I definitely engage with comic books – like yeah. no other media yeah. mm -hmm. even video games video games where you have to participate it's not the same right, right. so there's just something about it yeah because i have to say many of my students take the comics courses saying they're into comics and they have only ever seen the movies they've never read yeah. a comic yeah <laughs> yeah yeah they've seen the avengers so they think yeah. they're into yeah. comics uh -huh. but yeah. they discover the reading experience is something they really do enjoy that's good yeah. that's great i mean I've, you know you always hear the the story i remember reading the letter column and i think the letter column starting to make a little bit of a comeback i hope so it is yes uh, yes, yes. But uh, the and the Punisher, I remember reading a letter from a mom. Is like this is the only stuff my son will read. Mm -hmm. He's reading; his <laughs> vocabulary is improving. Da da da. And people, you know, at different times have said, "Oh, Shane, you've got a decent vocabulary." I think a lot of it's from reading comic books because they introduce some pretty pretty big words and. Oh yeah, books, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. When my mom would ask me, "How do you know that word?" The answer was always, "Yeah, a con usually a Thor comic book yeah. written by Stan Lee." Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so. Uh, I want to talk, and, and believe it or not, we only have about five or six minutes. So can you believe that? How no, quick no, this goes? Uh, so, but one thing that I'm seeing as a trend in comic books right now, and now let me be clear to the listeners, you and I already kind of talked about it during a break. I am not getting into the validity or not or whatever of any lifestyles. That's not what this is about. It's the very obvious trend in comic books in the past year or two, and it's accelerating. I'm seeing more and more of it. Uh, to sort of uh, represent diversity in the culture. Right. Nothing wrong with that. What I'm seeing happening, and, I, and this to me is just social engineering, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, that's, that's a little coldly clinical. I don't mean it like it's sinister. Mm -hmm. It's a purposeful trying to get people to embrace diversity by replacing uh, existing characters or by having existing characters suddenly exhibit new opinions or lifestyles or that sort of thing. Right, right. And that, that may reflect somewhat the politics of the creators, but right. I think even more it reflects the the business practices of the right. corporation that we want to expand the reader base. We want to do what's considered politically correct at the moment. We want to do what right. people think is the right way to represent the world. So unfortunately, it oftentimes is kind of a, a fad that's followed. And, and then just kind of 
Well, I think we're disappears. Yeah, I feel that we've gone from a few courageous moves to now we're getting into fad territory. That's what I'm starting to feel right. personally. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the companies copy each other. Marvel right. and DC do always. But remember when DC did that a few years back? They had the new version of the Atom, who was now, Asian, yeah, he was uh, had, uh, yeah. And I, you know. They did that with a number of characters, and right. then it lasted a year or two, yeah, and, then it, and the original versions came back. Well, you, you know, know, and they'll sometimes, like back in the 80s, uh, suddenly Iron Man was a black man, and Green Lantern was a black man. Right. So it'll happen sometimes. I'm not... Yeah. But, I'm, but like you said, though, yeah. it's those characters who already existed in the universe had to take over someone else's right. name. Uh for the sales, they felt like. Right. And, and so that's that's kind of a shame that you're still making the minority the second-class citizen. Exactly. Because you have to have the established that's, brand name that, that the white guy established. You know? So That's you know, my point. Yeah. That's what I don't like. It's it, it feels to me. Now, people, listen. I am not <laughs> going against the lifestyle or the ethnicity or any of that. If you have a diverse culture, your entertainment should represent that. But when you take an existing character – and suddenly change them, you're saying that if I, for example, introduce a gay character, that they can't stand on their own. They have to replace an existing yeah, character yeah. with decades of history or a woman or, you know, a Latino or whatever. And I, I understand there's a business side. Hey, we've got a, you know, whatever, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we want to make sure to have sales and we make sure to have these characters be high visibility. But this week, um, and, it, and it bothered me. I mean, it just straight up bothered me. Uh, not because of the lifestyle that they chose to represent for the diversity, but how they did it. Now, you know, I've been an Iceman fan for, I used to have his limited series back mm -hmm. in the 80s. I've always loved Iceman, Bobby Drake, whatever. So suddenly, uh, this week, he's, oh, well, I'm, I'm yeah. really gay. <laughs> and... Uh, Although I'd argue it's not sudden, but uh, well, actually I have a, a student who's doing a, a they're senior saying thesis on that right now. Or whatever. Yeah. Although and, the New York Times scooped him. And, uh, right. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that you take an existing character that's got decades of history, and then suddenly it's like they put a hand up into the puppet and make the mouth right, say something right. different. Yeah. That's what I don't like. But at the same time, it's comic books. You know, they, they, yeah. they've <laughs> radically changed other characters. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's, Marvel is really making a huge push right now you know, along these lines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've got an all-female Avengers book coming right, out now, right. which is fine. Yeah. Um, but, but sometimes I, I think they're trying a little too hard. Too hard, to, yeah. 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 And, you know, like Sam Wilson's been around for decades, a great character. Right. I wish we could just have uh, a world where a Falcon book right. would sell. As good as Captain America. As good as Captain America. Right. And you wouldn't have to have right. him be in someone else's right. role. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and then, like I said, it's a trend I'm seeing. And the whole point I even brought all that up was comics, especially superhero comics, has been used as a vehicle to kind of try to help encourage social change. You had um, Speedy, uh, mm, uh -huh, yeah. you know, <laughs> became drug addicted. Right. Uh, you know, then you had the classic uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, where Green Arrow was very liberal right. and, getting the, you know, they were doing the travel across America. Yeah, I remember one stuff. of those articles, uh, the major newspaper in the early 70s was like, Zap Pal, Zally, Captain yeah. Relevancy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, that, as I was saying, you know, so comic books are not just an entertainment form. No, no. And actually, yeah. the one of the things in the nonfiction comics uh, textbook, one of the reasons we wrote it is there's so much happening that people aren't aware of, of you know, the CIA making comics, they drop yep. behind. Yeah, know, probably. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. To tell people don't rebel, do rebel, whatever they want well, to do. Well, look at Jack uh, Chick, the Chick Tracks. Yeah. Those yeah. things were very. Uh, well, you um, know. Spire Comics, um, Al Hartley did yeah. a lot of, you know, there's an adaptation of The Cross and the Switchblade. Oh, okay. I didn't um, know that. Yeah. Born Again. I um, did not know that. The Colson story about his conversion in prison. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know uh, that. Um, comics. 35 is a group that um, it, it, their goal is to bring people to Jesus through, uh, through comics. visual narrative. Yeah. Right. And so and, the uh, point is, is that, <laughs> yeah. and it's effective, man. These chick tracks, millions of them have been thrown around there. Yeah. The, yeah. And the point, I'm not saying that people should go be a, read a comic book and become a Christian. I, I mean, I'm a Christian, well, but I'm not trying to push that of, on yeah, anybody. There's, I'm there's saying Wiccans that, using them also. Yeah. Right. It's a powerful <laughs> yeah. medium, is, right. is I guess right. what I'm saying. Believe it or not, we're almost out of time. What I'd like you to do, Randy, and... Uh, when I wrap the show, I'll have to do it rather abruptly. But 
Uh, tell me, and, and man, if you can do this in 30 or 40 seconds, okay. <laughs> what if I buy The Power of Comics versus your other book, what am I going to find in each one? And okay. if you can kind of sum up that for us, All and right. I'll close the show. The, the Power of Comics I use in the Introduction to Comic Studies course, and it's just what the subtitle of the book says. History of Comics, Explaining How the Forum Works, Explaining Its Role in Our Culture. Uh, and so it's a good introduction to comics, and it's a good introduction to the literature of comics, all the research that's out there, because okay. uh, we try to footnote tons of people. Um, the, the book on nonfiction comics is for a course called Nonfiction Comics We Teach, in which students make comics. And so they it's, make them? Yes. They, okay. they, and, and there's a journalist, uh, an artist, and myself who co-wrote it. And so we're trying to... Well, I'm going to get a copy. It looks yeah, great. Yeah, no, it's interesting. It, yeah. it, it shows them how to kind of make comics that, that can be re, re, a documentary, reporting, history. And, and links to both books are on shameplays.com in the show notes. Go go check it out and support people like Randy doing this super cool stuff. All right, got to wrap. We've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, Randy, thanks so much for being oh, on. Great I'd being love here. to have you yeah. on again. We never, I never get as deep as I want to <laughs> go. The hour goes so quick. But the tweet of the week, and I normally try to highlight somebody else's tweet, but because it's a, here's a tweet I threw out. It's appropriate to today from Shane Plays. When the biggest thing to talk about is sexuality, gender, or ethnicity of your characters, story has been tossed in favor of propaganda. Uh, next week, I've got some cool guests scheduled, but they're not 100% confirmed. I'm working on them. Uh, don't forget the temporary station change. One more week, 99.5. And last, you can find us on KryptonRadio.com. Krypton Radio, sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. We are out. Thank you.